the year was 1954. With their sturdy, broken-down microphones, they were headed for greatness in the American West. Jack and Ron in the morning. If you don't laugh like this, you're probably normal. The following entertainment special contains mature subject matter. Parents may consider some of the program content unsuitable for children. Parental discretion is advised. Bad Boys of Radio, here's Jack and Ron. Well, hey, happy day after Super Bowl. Man, what a game it was, too. It's Jack Dam Elliott, Ron Dam Williams. Absolutely fantastic. And I, 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 I'll be be honest with you. Uh, I had relatives over and, and a dog that kept me up. I think I had about three hours sleep. Whoa. So if I happen to just fall over, sure, you know, you just, can... just pull the chair out and I'll hit All the right. floor and you can... I'll carry, cover for you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Now, I didn't have anybody. I was supposed to go to a, a Super Bowl get together at a friend's, but I canceled out because I've I got the sinus thing going. You can tell with my congestion. And I think you should drink more alcohol. Oh, man. Believe and, me. I sterilize that inside. I couldn't agree more. By the way, we come to you live each and every Monday at 1 o'clock Central Time from Othello's Italian Restaurant in Edmond. Uh, right here at 1 South Broadway in historic downtown Edmond. Can't miss it. They have another location down there in Norman uh, on Campus Corner. Great restaurants, great Italian food. Monday is build your own pasta night. Tuesday is two for one Parmesan. Uh, they've got all kinds of specials. I think Wednesday kids eat free uh, when an adult accompanies them and the adult gets an entree. You know how it all goes. Yeah, how, how long does the youngest kid have to be? Well, uh, I think under 12. I've got a, I've got a son. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Your son. son is in his 30s, yeah. though. It, yeah. <laughs> May not work. Well, anyway. Oh, you don't want him to see him get started eating more. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so thanks to Othello's, Bob, Tammy, uh, Nancy, and uh, Jen, uh, the whole family of the uh, the Weiss family, they do a great job at Othello's, and we love them, and we love the restaurant, and you will, too, if you get over here and check it out. Uh, also, thanks to... Uh, the folks at uh, Andy B's, mm-hmm. Andy B's, the giant letter B is out in front of the place just south of 122nd on North Penn. It's like uh, a social bowl and uh, axe throwing pool playing. They got a giant bar, a top class restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, and most important, that incredible arcade, Andy yeah. B's. And a huge redemption center as well. And look, if you're planning on a spring break, you know, you and a bunch of your friends, or, or maybe just a, a, a gathering of of ladies or gentlemen or whatever the the situation may be, this is the place for you. It's got everything. You'll have a great time. You know, you can bring your kids or you can act like a kid, whatever the case may be. And uh, it's it's great. Let me tell you something. They have what they call duck pin bowling. Sure. Especially if you bring the kids with uh, smaller lanes and balls, almost like ski ball to a certain degree. And uh, they have the big giant traditional uh, lanes as well with, Huge television screens. I don't know how much bowling was going on while the Super Bowl was going. I guess they can, you can do both at that particular right. time. Yeah, it, it was great. And uh, they got an upscale restaurant and uh, uh, and a bar. And they have from classic boneless wings to unique appetizers like the unwrapped crab crab rangoon mm-hmm. and that and so much more. But you got to check it out. Uh, it's Andy B's. Let me tell you, bowl and social. Emphasis on the social because you will love getting together. Great place to get yeah. together. You will love every minute of it. Ron and I went in that arcade and we went just ballistically crazy. Oh yeah, so sat down. Fun. You sat down on that that uh, race car. <laughs> and let me let me tell you how long it's been since I've been in an arcade of that nature. Uh, I was running all over yeah. people. The tech and, has really changed yes. on, in arcades. You oh, know, the, the tech is God. so. So much more. We had to put on the 3D glasses. Uh, So cool. uh, Anyway, you got to check it out. And and that's not all. What if if you're moving from one place to another? I was going to mention. Either either voluntarily or involuntarily. (laughs) The game changers of the moving industry are another big sponsor of the show. Flash Hauler. F-L-A-S-H-O-L-R dot com. That's Flash Hauler dot com. And they're now affiliated with every senior living center in the state of Oklahoma. So if you've got an aunt, uncle, or somebody uh, about to uh, leave their current dwelling and maybe step into a 
assisted living or senior or downsize living. a little yeah, bit. Downside, yeah, that's the people or, to call. Or maybe your, your kids finally got a job and got the hell out of your house, go to and f- now you want to just just get it to a place where you can go ahead and enjoy life. Go to Flash Holler, dot com. F L A S H O L R dot com. Also, remember we got a website. Uh, jackandron.com J-A-C-K-A-N-D-R-O-N.com jackandron.com uh, we're on YouTube we're on Facebook uh, share this uh, on Facebook if you're watching on Facebook right now share it with all your Facebook pals all your friends your enemies just uh, you know your pet monkey your frog Whoever, whatever, yeah, share it, this podcast. You'll surprise them because they didn't think you were that hip Yeah, but you are no doubt about let it let them know all right, we got to start out with two tough trivia, and then we'll do asinine trivia because Richard is here. Richard's running all the gear. You can almost call him Richard Gear. Huh? Hey, yeah. hey, now, yeah. Now well, you- now that I look at him, what? Yeah. <laughs> let, anyway. let me look at him again. Okay. <laughs> so Richard is our guy who puts up all the gear and sets it all up, and he's kind of the executive producer of this whole mess. Uh, So we thank him, too, for being here each and every week. We got to go to Too Tough Trivia. All right, let's knock it out. Black History Month, we have a question that could have a black history uh, implication. Maybe not. Mm. The question, who is Matthew Henson? Matthew Henson. Who is Matthew Henson? Is that Chris Henson's brother? (laughs) No. (laughs) I I will say this. Matthew Henson is uh, someone that history ignored until recently. So there it is. I your think question. I know. Matthew I'm not, not going to give the answer, yeah. but I think I know. Yeah. I know who Matthew Henson is. I do. I do. Yeah, and do you, who is Donald Trump? <laughs> 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 I did, did you hear the latest from him? He says when he get now he's already talked about revenge and uh, getting a bunch of people back. Now he says he plans to institute, you ready? Yeah. Martial law. Oh, man. And it's like, you know, how in the, because I still don't, he's not telling you any policy, anything he's going to do for the country. It's all revenge for him. And I I still keep saying, how can this guy, at least in the polls, be so high when he's just telling you that he's going to send the country right down the crapper? And, you know, the guy I kind of feel bad for is a Republican senator from Oklahoma, James Lankford, who is trying to... Get this bill. A bill is basically a law. You know, it's when I was young and I first heard him talking about a bill, I think a bill is something we get in the mail that mom and dad have to pay. No, uh, a, a bill in the, you know, in the legislature and all. It's basically yeah, get a congressional so, deal. Yeah, yeah. You're trying to sign a law. Yeah. In, in, to put this was the effect. Senate for him. Yeah. And he's in the Senate. Anyway, senior senator from Oklahoma, James Lankford. And I feel bad for the guy because he's trying to go ahead and uh, through this bipartisan um, effort, get this passed to where they can secure the borders. But a bunch of people in his party apparently don't want it done because they want it to no, happen no, 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 after no. the election. He, Trump, doesn't want it to happen right. because if the problem is halfway solved, then what is he, what, what, what he going to run on at this particular point? I felt okay. bad because, uh, you know, uh, McConnell and a bunch of other senators saying, you know, this is the first bipartisan thing we've done in 30 years. And they were all for it. And Trump said, no, don't approve it. And you know what? As they say, they all bent down and kissed his ring and said, OK, we'll look we'll look yeah. stupid. Well, but James, uh, James Lankford from Oklahoma, good guy. I've met him a number of times. I yeah. had, had when I was doing the uh, talk show over there at KOK CFM, he came in studio a couple of times, met him, visited with him. And he's a Pretty straight. Uh, I know yeah. he's an ultra conservative, and that's not necessarily because I'm an independent, registered independent. Ron's a registered independent. So we think, you know, a little out of the box on some things. Uh, I think the best thing, you know, he says, and, and I tend to agree with him, it's he said, James Lankford said, my grandmother always told me there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. And so he's trying to yeah. do that with Secure in the yeah. Border. With I had a bill. chance to meet him at OCCC when there was some type of job fair going on there. And uh, I, I wait a minute. Was that it? Was a remote? No, it had to be a remote. And uh, at you that, never uh, went anywhere unless it was a remote so, <laughs> a remote broadcast. Hey, <laughs> gas costs money. I know. <laughs> so at that particular point, he and I was talking to him. He says, "I want you in my campaign," and I'm saying, "Wow, this is really nice." And then I, I learned 
different things about him, and I, I didn't pursue it. But oh, wow. uh, he, he was talking about the uh, Trump saying, "Whoever brings this up or tries to pass this, I'll destroy you." And that's what he said. And he says he's he's destroying me because he tried to do the right thing. I, you know, it just bugs me when a congressman is trying to do something that the rest of his colleagues agree on, you know? Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, one guy who isn't a congressman, isn't, you know, isn't in office, can go ahead and threaten them, and all of a sudden they they kowtow to him, and it's, it's, it's terrible. I'll be glad when this election, however it ends, I'll be glad when it is over, man. I, there I, you go. I, I can't. I can't handle it. I just can't handle stupidity. Uh, I'm with you, my man. I am with you all of the way. All the way. Oh, you know what we got to do? Asinine trivia. This is the uh, part of the program where we quiz Richard, the director, the producer, the man with all the gear. Uh, we we quiz him with three questions that are so easy. It's asinine. Asinine trivia. Here we go. Question one, Richard. What is a male dog doing? <laughs> when he lifts his when he lifts his leg, what's a male dog doing when he lifts his leg? No, it urinating. You're right. Oh, I was about to say it depends upon who's under that leg, <laughs> but that's okay. Go ahead. Number two, question two, Richard. What is your area code? Admin. No, your area code. Oh, four or five. Yeah. Okay. Good. Ooh. Wow. Oh, yeah. we I almost stumped, stumped him on that one. On well, that one. I said this was for the first one, <laughs> and this is for the second one. Oh. <laughs> I was a little worried. Next week we <laughs> might. Next week we <laughs> might ask, "What is your name?" <laughs> anyway, <laughs> here's question number might three. Get flabbergasted. <laughs> question number three in Asinine Trivia, Richard. Name the two guys who have won more broadcast awards than any other broadcasters in the entire state of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and who enjoy sticking hostess Twinkies between their thighs to squeeze out that delicious cream. Mm. Oh, while listening and inserting hemorrhoid <laughs> ointment in their nostrils to shrink their nasal swelling. And who also performed the number one video podcast in America. Who the hell would that be? Jeez. Jackie Ron. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You know, from right. what uh, he described at the very beginning, uh, I don't think anybody would have mind if you had missed that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know anybody like that, man. Oh, God. I got a couple <laughs> of quick extras for you real fast today. Burger King has launched a new contest. Burger King got a new contest going. You can win a million dollars. The person who can come up with the next great Whopper innovation. I don't really know what they mean. They say Whoppers currently offer more than 200,000 possible customized combinations. But if you've ever wanted something different than what they offer, uh, what would it be? What would be your pitch? Cheese in it my meat. If you like want enemy? cheese in the meat, Ooh, yeah. Well, good ha idea. have you ever had that? You you yeah, take that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you take two pieces of meat and you, you put the meat and then you uh, put the pan. cheese. Yeah, and and any anything else you want in there, you know, yeah. lettuce and all that stuff. M &Ms, and when it cooks, yeah. it cooks all through the meat. Oh man! It's well, great. if you want to participate, yeah. if you want to take a shot at winning a million dollars, and it better not be what I just said, or we got to split. <laughs> Coming up with an innovation for a Burger King Whopper to participate. You need one of their free Royal Perks accounts, and you can submit your suggestion through their app or at bk.com slash mdw. That's bk.com slash mdw. Uh, See, I hate s s sending my information that is supposed I to know. benefit me to now send it to this address, this email address, and it's nice and long, and and you double check. Do I make sure that I get the right? Is it is it forward or backwards? Make sure I got all the punctuation and all that. Uh, but you know, hey, heck, if you're sitting at home watching TV, you might as well go ahead and do it. Take a chance, get some money. Talking about. Big time money and big time opportunities with fast food. How about this? McDonald's has announced a new sweepstakes. They are offering free burgers for a year. Specifically, that's two $8 burgers per week for a whole year. Makes it a value of about $832 over a year. Just stand, excuse me just a second. I don't mean to interrupt. Did you say an $8 burger at McDonald's? Apparently, they got it. Good God. 
<laughs> I remember. I remember yeah. now. I heard some complaints last week from people saying, and this was a news report. People are complaining that the hash brown is now three dollars each at McDonald's. So um, eight dollar burger. They're wanting you to promote their new hotter, juicier, tastier burgers at McDonald's. I haven't tried them, but I'm 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 tempted. Uh, if you're interested, uh, because the way you can do this and win these burgers is to spot the Hamburglar's car. If the Hamburglar's car is in your neighborhood or in your area and you spot it and identify it, you could get free burgers for a year. Identify it to who? I guess you got to go to that. Oh, well, you hit up the uh, spothamburglar.com. That's S-P-O-T and then hamburglar.com. Fill out the entry form. They are selecting four winners at the end of February. You got to uh, spot the hamburglar. So cut. if that hamburglar is in a neighborhood <laughs> and about 10, 15 people see it, then you, you're up against 10 or 15 people. Easily. Yeah. That's and they're only going to give that away four times. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, four, four times eight is what? <laughs> <laughs> my, my throat. I've got this congestion and stuff going on. I can't even think. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I, you know, that that's not bad, $40 burgers. Uh, something else last night, you know, the, everyone's talking, and, and they were especially doing it this morning. They had a, a, a special on what uh, a lot of the announcers were doing at uh, last night's Super Bowl. And the one thing that uh, I was talking with, with Richard about, too, uh, a, major, a major error that the referees missed. <laughs> and uh, it, I guess at this point, the, the team you were rooting for won, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> that that uh, uh, touchdown pass that McCaffrey made and scored the touchdown. I remember. Yeah. And the, the announcer made the uh, uh, statement that, hey, there's an illegal man downfield. That score could, shouldn't count. Right. And, of course, Kansas didn't challenge it. And they were talking about it again this morning. Had it all. I said, "Hey, that's that, incredible that, that yeah. Andy Reid or any of his assistant coaches didn't catch that." Yeah, but? yeah. Uh, who knows? All, all I know is that uh, fate, the fate said, "We're screwing you on this one. We're going to screw them on the game." Ah, and bam, got it. Won the game with three <laughs> seconds left. Ah, amazing. It was a. It was a really great game. What is it? Great the game. First. Uh, Overtime game in what, 30 years? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. so that, that was... It was a good game. You know, that, that's the best. Everybody always talks about whether they whether they have a, a dog in that hunt or not, you know, in terms of a favorite team. People always say when they watch the game, they like it to be close. They don't like it to see... see to, they don't want to see it blow be out. a blowout, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, um, we got to go ahead and make uh, one little announcement, kind of a sad note uh, here. Uh, we've talked about... Uh, our friend uh, Kathy Cummings with Vito's Italian Restaurant. As you know, we do our broadcast each week from Othello's Italian Restaurant, totally separate companies, totally separate restaurants. But mm -hmm. uh, Kathy Cummings passed away the other day from uh, gallbladder cancer. Mm. Uh, she had only, I mean, they just diagnosed it, what, four months ago? Yeah, I was about like to say, it just seemed that uh, the uh, announcement that she was ill uh, was, was brought out and, yeah. you know, and the next thing we know, she's gone. God, God, Very sad. And I, and if a never, wonderful lady. A wonderful you, lady. Yeah, if you've never met Kathy Cummings, who the owner and proprietor of Vito's Italian Restaurant, one of the most positive, happy, always smiling individuals. She was once the mayor of the village here in Oklahoma City. Uh, and you, you walked in that restaurant. When you walked in, everybody who came in got a hug from Kathy, always happy. And, in fact, uh, the owners here at uh, – Othello's, Bob and Tammy, I took them one night for dinner at Vito's so that they could all meet because Kathy's husband, Sean Cummings, owns Sean Cummings Irish Pub, which is attached to Vito's. Yep. Anyway, great people, great family, and so sad. Sorry to see Kathy pass at the yeah. age of 62, same age as Toby Keith. Jeez, man. Yeah. But that, that was that was terrible. It, folks, it, it's a little late now, but talk to somebody who has met her, you know, like either one of us, a woman that would warm your heart. Yeah. A woman that that you would you you would want to go by her business just for the sake of maybe seeing her and maybe she'd sit down and talk to you. She was just that great. She was a wonderful woman and uh, Oklahoma City, the state, is uh, a lot sorrier because she's gone. Because she she was a, yeah. a 
a great lady. Kathy Cummings was an incredible lady and a real ambassador for her business, her restaurant, yep. and of course for the village as mayor of the village. A tremendous lady. So we, we will miss her and uh, condolences to Sean, her husband, and the rest of her family, her yeah. daughters, and so forth. All right, we got some audio we want to play for you. And by the way, we got to say hi to Chandra Tucker, who's checking us out on Facebook. If you're checking us out on Facebook, be sure to share this with all your other Facebook friends and lovers. Hey, don't for- <laughs> Well, hey. Valentine's Day is around. Well, the corner, so. hey, don't forget about uh, uh, W.D. Butcher, Butcher, or uh, Butcher. Anyway, he's watching right now. Oh, okay. I appreciate it. See, that's funny because. Names pop up on mine that don't pop up on yours, and that name did not pop up pop up on well, my well. You, Facebook you get a page. bunch of names that I don't get. I get you. So, well, uh, we got some audio for you. Listen to this. We're going to crank this up for you. Uh, we're all somewhat uh, surprised and very, very, you know, saddened to hear about the passing of Toby Keith. Uh, he had appeared on that country music show. Uh, it was a country music awards program, singing that song "Don't Let the Old Man In," which was inspired by Clint Eastwood. So we dug through the archives and we found a little clip of a young girl talking about playing and singing for Toby and how excited she was to meet him. And here is that clip with a narrator. She's got everything that I have to live with She came to Nashville last year writing her own songs, singing them, and hoping someone would like them. Toby Keith did. So much so that he just signed her to his new record label. That makes them partners. You're in the room with him and you can feel it. There's a power there and you're just like, oh my God. So I don't think I'll ever get to a point where I won't see him and be like, oh my God, that's Toby Keith. That girl is Taylor Swift. Taylor yep. Swift was discovered more or less by Toby Keith. Uh, he signed her to his uh, record. He and uh, his partner signed her initially to his record label. And uh, wonder what happened, why, why she separated his label probably wasn't that big, and I mean, I don't know. I'm just guessing that. Yeah, well, you know, other labels came after. Good a guess as any, I guess, at this uh, point. Yeah. yeah, it's a crapshoot to know, but uh, at any rate, you know, Toby took a liking to her and her music and her songwriting skills. He was a hell of a songwriter too, from what I understand. I mean, you know, I never really followed Toby Keith's. Uh, musical career that much I, mean, no, I, did, I didn't follow it are yeah. you kidding no I mean because <laughs> it was a country based you know obviously country based uh, era of music that he performed and so there were a couple songs I was familiar with you know but I, I was Should not have been a, big, a cowboy yeah yeah and at that last one the uh, one he did at the country music awards don't let the old man in it was inspired by clint eastwood because he and clint were friends and one day he was playing golf with clint eastwood from what i the way toby describes him this is years ago playing golf with Ke- clint eastwood and clint's up in his 80s and toby said to him, man how do you do it every day you know you're making all these movies and you're still going strong and clint eastwood said every day i wake up i look in the mirror and i say don't let the old man in and that was uh, the inspiration for that yeah. song, Don't Let the Old Man. I saw the clip of uh, Toby and uh, and Clint Eastwood playing golf together. And, you know, Clint was out there, I guess, having a good time and, and wasn't taking care of himself that well. <laughs> and and I, I didn't recognize him at first. I said, nah. I said who is that frazzled? Oh, that's yeah. Clint Eastwood. Oh, geez. I know. Nah, that's, that's he's really man. gotten he's gotten pretty frail over the years, but he's still doing movies. We got to say hi to Cat. Cat Ann is watching today. Hey, Cat, how are you? Good to have you. Um, I was going to mention something else about Toby Keith and his passing. Oh, I remember what it was. Somebody said, "Do you ever meet Toby Keith?" And I I put it up on my Facebook page. I did meet Toby Keith or bump into him. I was at the Fiesta Bowl in uh, Phoenix or Glendale, which is a suburb of Phoenix. Uh, OU was playing Boise State, and we lost by one point, by the way, that game. And I think it was, I can't remember the year, 2017 maybe. So anyway, so I'm there at the stadium, and I'm talking to the guards and the people, and they, they let me down on the field, believe it or not. They thought I was with the Fox 25 TV station because I was friends with all those people, and they were there because Fox was carrying the game that year. They let me down on the field and all. I was like, hey, wow, I didn't have any press badges or anything. So then I go, I say to the guy, hey, is there a place to get a beer where I don't have to stand in line? He says, hey, if you go down these stairs, there's a bar, little kiosk in the basement, and not many people even know it's there. Okay, great. So I go down. There's two people there. 
Toby Keith and one of his buddies. I go and get a beer, and Toby says to me, "Did you recognize him?" Oh yeah, mm. and he and he recognized me for some reason. I guess maybe. Jack Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> hey, next beer's on me. No, no. <laughs> he probably thought you was Ron Williams. Yeah, <laughs> he did. <laughs> well, we look a lot anyway. So I go and I get my beer and I pay for it. I'm like, holy god! Uh, and Toby goes, "Hey man, can you believe eight dollars for a bottle of beer?" And I mean. Nowadays, you you expect to pay that much money because you know it's astronomical everywhere. I think if you go to the Paycom Center, it's like twelve bucks a beer. But at that time, eight dollars for a bottle of beer was astronomical. And I told, "Who were y'all drinking? Do you remember?" Just a regular Bud. Uh, oh, I Bud that. or Bud Light, one of the two. And I, I mean, it was Paps or something. <laughs> <laughs> I said, and so I said, I turned and I said to him. Eight bucks for a model. Well, I guess I'll have to get a loan for my second one, you know, and that was oh. the end of our conversation. But that was one time I, I ran into him just coincidentally uh, underneath the stadium at the, uh, I forget the name of the damn stadium in Phoenix anyway, but that was uh, where the Fiesta Bowl was taking place. And then it was a great game up until we lost. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, I'd like to say hello to, to one of our uh, uh, old colleagues, man, we worked with. Who's that? Uh, Sean Witcher, we knew her as Sean Carey. Oh, okay. And she's checking us out right now. Hey, thanks for checking us out. We appreciate it. Uh, we got to take a break, don't we? It's time to take a commercial break. Huh. Yeah. Uh, we'll Say that back. again. Huh. Huh. How about that? <laughs> yeah, we'll take a quick break. Oh, by the way, coming up, we got news of the I'll Be Damned. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, a sleazy, trashy showbiz report. Tribon, uh, dumbass joke of the day. So much. Uh, and yeah, so and other- don't forget about the two tough trivia question. Who is Matthew Henson? Who? Who? Is Matthew Henson. Yes. Who is he? I believe I know, but I don't want to give it away. All right. So hang in there. Uh, we'll take a break. Be right back. And we'll tell you more about Andy B's and uh, Flash Holler and a couple other things. Hang on. Are you guys up there? Affirmative. Your backup is cloud-based. It's all on the cloud nowadays. That's funny. But do you guys have the wings? Winger, Jack. Winger. Winger. Hey, they had a couple of big hits back in the 80s, remember? Winger, big hair. Great wings don't just fall from the sky. They come from Louie's, where we're preparing food fresh daily. Come try one of our great new sandwiches. Or wings with any of seven delicious sauces. Louie's, we're in your neighborhood. We've got this down to a science. Over. Yeah, we're just not up here winging it. Hey, Al, I thought we were meeting at Othello's. Hey, Jack, I am at Othello's. Well, I'm looking around, and I don't see you. Well, wait, are you at Othello's in Edmond? No, I'm at Othello's in Campus Corner in Norman. Oh, great. Well, fortunately, both Othello's have great Italian food. They sure do, and I'm having the baked ziti. Ooh, I'm having chicken marsala. Let's continue with the meeting. Yeah, sure thing, over the phone, but I need one thing. What's that? Uh, Your credit card number, because you're buying. Othello's Italian Restaurant on Campus Corner in Norman and in downtown Edmond. You bought it online, and now you need to haul that big couch, flat, a washer or dryer, and need to transport it from the seller's location to yours, flash hauler it. Have office furniture to move across town, flash hauler it. Car breakdown, and you need a tow, flash hauler it. Anytime you need furniture or appliances moved or need a tow, flash hauler it. Haul it, tow it, deliver it with flash hauler. Download the flash hauler app free. Do it now. Flash. Yeah. Do it now. I wonder if they will take stuff uh, that you won't try, uh, you know, take into get the, rid of. They yeah. get rid of this. You just stack it up there and just dump it, you know, somewhere. Well, to, not, not the, the way, the way, the place you're supposed to dump it, not just let it fall off the truck. On All the you got to do is check them out. Go to flashholler.com. Yeah. That's f l a s h o l r dot com. Flashholler.com, the game changers in the moving industry. If you've got an uncle, an aunt, a grandparent, maybe wanting to downsize, move into a senior center, they are now affiliated with every senior center in uh, senior center in the entire state of Oklahoma. Flashholler, yeah. F-L-A-S-H-O-L-R.com. Don't worry about packing and unpacking. You know what? They do it for you. Yep. All you have to do is just sit back in your chair and uh, point and give directions. And you know, so many of the companies that do this sort of thing uh, do it on an hourly rate, not flash holler. They'll meet with you. Mm -hmm. They'll go over all the details and give you one flat rate. No change in price. If they tell you it's going to cost X number of dollars, that is what you'll pay for the whole process. Even if it gets a little complicated, it's a little out of hand. Maybe it's got to go more than one day. Guess what? That price that they quoted you, that still stands. So go to flashholler.com, F-L-A-S-H-O-L-R.com. Also a quick reminder, Andy B's, great place. If you haven't Uh. been there, 
just south of 122nd on North Penn. And uh, look for the giant letter B out in front. It's about two stories high. Uh, they've got bowling. They've got duck bowling. They've, is it duck pin bowling? Duck, duck, duck pin, pin bowling. bowling. They've got axe throwing. they got an arcade that'll blow you away. Uh, outstanding first-class restaurant. Huge bar, all the adult beverages you'll ever need. They've uh-huh. got it all. And you know what? Especially if you're bowling, you can go. They have what they call lane side service. You can order right from your lane. Whoa. If you're thirsty, if you're hungry. And, of course, they have the, I call them uh, the, the nice robot. Uh-huh. Uh, if you don't feel like carrying that big old heavy ball, uh, you put it on the robot. He'll take it right to your lane for you. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic, folks. You know how to bowl, but you need to have the bowling experience, and that's what you get. Yep. Andy, Andy B's. All right, check them out. They are on uh, Penn, North Penn, just south of Northwest 122nd. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, class reunion, you know, it's spring break coming up. Oh, yeah. What are you going to do? Hey, you're going to go to Andy B's because you can party there. They even have a special room just for those gatherings, just for those parties and things like that. You need to take advantage of it. Better still, go by and check it out. Andy B's. There you go. Got to say hi to uh, Misty Purcell and Wade Scott checking us out today. Thanks so much. Be sure to share this incredible number one video podcast in America. Share it with everybody on your list. Your friends, uh, your loved ones, your relatives, your pet monkey, whoever. Share and share alike. All right? We got to get to some email because we get a bunch of questions from a lot of people who just have a crisis going on in their life. And who do they go to? No, no, no. Not Dr. Phil. <laughs> They come to Jack and Ron, damn it. Yes, indeed. And uh, I'm sure they will have some more uh, email as far as, you know, the Super Bowl. But this one we picked ahead of time. Dear Jack and Ron, first, I am not crazy, but I swear I saw a UFO. A I, UFO? A UFO. I was out getting some uh, Super Bowl supplies when in the eastern sky I saw a bright light. It moved back and forth. So I went on home. But get foot. That what? light followed me. Oh, my. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I got home. My wife thinks I'm, I'm seeing things. And my son says he's not surprised. And experts uh, more and more acknowledging such sightings. And we are not alone. Well, and, says, and says, if I don't believe, in, to check with you guys. Well, first of all, thanks for checking with us, and uh, thanks for having such a smart son. Uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I've seen a UFO before, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go ahead and, and point my thumb to this guy because I know he has as well. I have too. Ron yeah. has seen one. I've seen one. The one I saw was uh, back in the 1970s. It was between Gallup and Thoreau, New Mexico. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning. I had not been drinking. I was, <laughs> I was going to say, did the cops go back and check the road? Is this your bottle? <laughs> I'm driving toward Phoenix. Yeah. Driving to Phoenix. And uh, all of a sudden, I look up. The, the vehicle was a brand new vehicle, by the way. I had rented it to drive to Phoenix. All of a sudden, the radio started going out, the electronics in the vehicle. And I look around, and there's like 20 other cars pulled off semi-tractor trailers were were all pulled off the side of the road looking up at this thing it could have been the blimp but it wasn't and it was silent and it was just sitting there kind of in the sky one a helicopter one an airplane and it was not the blimp and if ever we all got out of our vehicle like what the hell and eventually it, it was only a few hundred feet over the ground and eventually it just gone mm. and so and all of a sudden the car started back up nope. all the electronics worked no so probing, gone. huh? Yeah. What's that? No, no probing. probing. Man, I no. feel like that's like what you look for. I know. I was hoping to get, get probed. Excited, you're like, oh, here comes the probe. <laughs> Never happened. No, oh, no, no, no. What's no. the point? What's yeah. the point? Anyway. Well, hey, take and expose me to some fantastic radiation that gives me superpowers. There I'd rather have go. that. What if it takes probing? Well, how long? <laughs> Until they're satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't think so. Oh, you see, you're 100% against alien probing. Uh, I'm at, not, this yeah, point, yeah. at this point, I figure they should be advanced enough where probing is unnecessary. There you go. Yeah. They should be able to, uh, no, I'm not doing the probe thing. Come on. Uh, <laughs> all right. We got to get to Roy, the movie guy who's joining yeah, us. Come to- on, E.T. Yeah. Oh, E.T., come on. <laughs> Roy's got some information. That I wonder, do we know what movie Roy is covering this week? Or do uh, we not? Let me. I, I don't know. Nah, well, let's check in with Roy, the movie guy. Hey, Roy, what's going on? 
Thank you, guys. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Now let's talk some box office numbers and what's opening up in this weekend at the box office. Coming in at number five was Wonka with $3.1 million. The Chosen Season 4, Episodes 1 through 3 with $3.2 million. The Beekeeper with $3.5 million. Lisa Frankenstein with three point eight, and Argyle for the second weekend in a row, number one with six point five million dollars. Now let's talk about what's opening up this weekend at the box office. We have two new titles. The first one is Madam Web, starring Dakota Johnson, Sydney Sweeney, Isabella Merced, Emma Roberts, and Adam Scott. Cassandra Webb is a New York City paramedic who starts to show signs of clairvoyance. Forced to confront revelations about her past, she must protect three young women from a mysterious adversary who wants them dead. Rated PG-13 with a runtime of one hour and 54 minutes long. Up next we have Bob Marley, One Love, starring Kingsley ben Lashana Lynch, Michael Gandolfini, and James Norton. Jamaican singer-songwriter Bob Marley overcomes adversity to become the most famous reggae musician in the world. Rated PG-13 with a runtime of 1 hour and 47 minutes long. And that's a look at what's opening up this weekend at the box office. Back to you guys in the studio. You know, I was reading, and I understand, too, they expected the box office to be really, really slow this past weekend because of the Super Bowl. And uh, it turned out the, they may be right. They were right. Yeah. How about Michael Gandolfini's in this new movie, huh? The Bob Marley movie. Michael Gandolfini would be uh, James James Gandolfini's son. Yeah. James Gandolfini, who I still watch Sopranos episodes. When I get bored and I can't find anything, I'll just you know pick up my uh, remote control. You got that little blue microphone thing on that Cox uh, contour thing. I'll just mm-hmm. go, Sopranos. And bam, up come all the episodes. I can pick and choose which episode I want to watch. Yeah, I have to, I have to thank you because I really wasn't into Sopranos until you started talking about it uh, passionately. Last. You mean years ago? Or? Yeah, years yeah. ago, years ago. And I started watching and I said, hey, look at this. This is, uh, it was really interesting. I, I don't know if they thought it had run its course or what, but I don't, I don't see so because so many people still miss it. And of course, uh, James Gandolfini, you know, passed. So there's, there's that. He's that, and him, and one of my favorite characters in the show, Tony Sirico, played Polly Walnut. Is what I call. Yeah, they call him Polly Walnut, and he passed <laughs> away last year as yeah. well. And man, I, I, he was one of my favorite characters. He was the best. Yeah, I really enjoyed that show a lot, and it was nice. It was fun to watch the two kids, the Soprano children, grow up, especially Meadow. Uh, she grew into a fine woman. Yeah, did she not? I, uh, I love the episode where where Meadow uh, brought a brother home. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and boy, boy, you can and, see Tony. Oh man, and a, the her Tony. dad. And I'm saying, Tony, what's what's the problem? What's wrong? Can she can she see who she wants to see? That was funny. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> really miss the Sopranos, but uh, plenty of episodes out there. If you have never seen the Sopranos, you might want to check them out. Uh, good stuff. Really good show. Uh, and you know what I find it made, uh, really interesting about Sopranos too, it was there was a lot of real hardcore. Uh, say it, say it. You know, well, <laughs> I know you're, say you're, you're it. about the sex part, but you know they owned they owned the the strip club, so that was one part of it. But to me, that they the, had sex there too. There was uh, there was a lot of you know killings and what have you, but overall there was a touch of comedy to it. There were some pretty funny moments in that movie, in that uh, series. I, I thought uh, there were certain parts of it that just made me roar. see that. That's what kind of uh, took me a while because you talk about a, a, a killing, a real gruesome killing, and you'd laugh. And I'd say, "Do I want to see this show? <laughs> Do I really want to see this?" That's no, good stuff. All right, we got some more audio we got to get to for you. We bring this to you because we thought you'd want to hear it. An Ohio woman is all upset. Uh, her house was trashed by her daughter's friends. Her daughter apparently threw a party, you know, parents are out of town. She's thinking she'll have four or five friends over. Well, while the woman's out of town, daughter throws the party. Uh, on top of that, a decorative goose dressed in honor of Taylor Swift, a decorative goose Hmm. dressed in honor of Taylor Swift was stolen. Now being held hostage by one of the partiers. Uh, here is Bridget what? Strahan. I know, you talk about strange. Here is Bridget talking about the damage done to her home and the missing Taylor Swift porcelain goose. Listen up. 
They super glued cups to my counters and cinnamon. My countertops come apart from the wall now because they were standing and dancing on counters. Somebody ate my plant and threw it up. Also, who stole my goose? This is not in my house. This is in somebody's room. They made a TikTok with Betty, like pretending to be Betty and harassing me on my TikTok. Wow, how about that? They were dancing on a countertop. Kind of creative. Yeah, one of the mm. one of the partiers ate one of her plants and then threw it up. Now, what, 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 <laughs> and this, was this was that the mom? Yeah, that was the mom complaining about the party. Was she calling from the? Uh, I don't know, police station for, have been. for really brutally beating her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> huh? huh? I, know, I bet that daughter is in a little hot water, but she won't oh. be throwing any more parties. But how many times have you heard that happen over the years when you're a young person and you hear of other young people, their parents go out of town, you're a high school student or whatever, and all of a sudden you tell a couple friends, hey, my parents are out of town. Why don't you come over? Next thing you know, they've got... Not only their two or three friends they invited, but those two or three friends invited two or three more. Pretty soon, it's like a pyramid scheme. You know, it's like, uh, what was that th that stuff they used to sell? Shackley or whatever, you know, where you tell two people and my, then tell, my, tell my, two more. And then, Amway, man. Amway, there yeah, you go. That's, Same deal. Oh, turn, man. This, this well, was, but this was for a party. At what and, point do you say, I'm sorry, no, no more people in here? Yeah. Uh, you know, that. can you say not say no? Can you say no? Uh, and, and, well, it's hard to stop them when you're, you know, she's a single girl and, and they just, oh, no, no, it'll be okay. And they just keep storming on in. What are you going to do? All right. Well, Jeez. so there you have it. Now we've got to get to, oh, one of the favorite parts of the show. News of the I'll be damned. Richard, you ready for this? Give it to me. Okay. <laughs> A young guy near San Bernardino, California, was at a public park the other day and needed to use the bathroom. But the men's room was full. Oh, no. Oh, no, he cried. Of people? What will he do next? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was full of people. Okay. So he figured he'd just go ahead and pop into the ladies' room well. real quick, which was empty at the time. Unfortunately, two women walked in right after him and thought he was a perv. So they went back out and told somebody. That somebody was a 33-year-old guy named Rudy who waited outside <laughs> with a gun. And when the guy came out, Jeez. Rudy shot him in the knee <laughs> for going into the woman's restroom because he couldn't wait to go. He had to go really bad. And so the men's room's full. There's nobody in the women's room. He goes in there. Two women follow, not knowing he's in there, and they think he's a perv. They tell the guy outside. He comes out, and he shoots him in the knee. People at a nearby, but nearby skate park knew the victim and confirmed he's not a perv. He's well-liked and hangs out at the park a lot. I don't know. That would kind of worry me. Well, how, how, big, <laughs> how big is that lawsuit he's, got, he's, he's had to bring? What's he doing on Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Wasn't Will Come Rod on, man. What in Will Rogers Park, was it? Uh, luckily. Ooh. Was where was it? Will Rogers Park at? Where is that at? 36th in Portland. Yeah. And here's the deal. Huh. Yeah. Don't back in. Don't back it's your it's car in. Yeah, that, that's 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 a, back, that's a sign when you back your car in. If you back your car in, it means you're looking. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> Have y'all done this show out yeah, there before? Yeah, back that thing up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Paramedics got the guy to a hospital. His injuries were non-life-threatening. Uh, Rudy, the guy with the gun, fled the scene and threw the gun out the car window when cops pulled him over. Now he's facing charges. Including attempted murder. Did you say murder? Yes, you said murder. murder. All right, there you go. All right. Oh, I know what we got to do next. Just realized this is part of the show you got to do, and I get to relax. It's time. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> the sleazy, trashy showbiz report. Well, as I mentioned to you and to uh, Richard, uh, uh, coming up on the 15th. Uh, I guess that's Thursday. A and E will have a brand new series featuring an artist, an artist that I I grew up with and I really dig, James Brown. James Brown. So uh, I don't know how long it's going to last. The rest of the month, or uh, you know, eight episodes. Who knows? But it should be interesting. And which channel is showing this? A and E. A and E. Okay. Because yeah, so. you know CNN had that deal uh, two weekends ago, and it was like two weekends in a row of 
Martha Stewart. It was like two back to back, two back. It was like a total of four episodes or whatever you want to call it, yeah. a docu-series on Martha Stewart. It was really good. Too. Yeah, and she declined to uh, comment on any yeah. of the things, the, the show or anything else. And I don't blame her because, quite frankly, she came off looking really swell. <laughs> Kanye West battling with Ozzy Osbourne and the estate of Donna Summer. What? For using samples of their songs oh. without their permission. Can't Supposedly, Kanye asked Ozzy, and Ozzy said no. And Kanye said, I'm Ozzy. I'm uh, I'm Kanye. Really. I'll do I'm it Kanye anyway. Really. Yeah, and that's exactly what he did. Now, in case you missed them talking about the Super Bowl yesterday, halftime guests with Usher included Alicia Keys, her, Will I Am, Ludacris, and Lil John. And I know I missed somebody else, but I don't know. Jermaine so, Dupree was out there. Yeah, yeah, Jermaine yeah. Jermaine Dupree. Yeah. Well, you know what gets me about her is that that female that the played the guitar. Uh, it's Capital H period, capital E period, capital R period. Her. What are the? I don't even know what the three letters stand for, but I've always known her as her. But it's confusing. You say, "Oh, I saw her." Saw who? Her. Yeah, it's kind of like who's on first. That deal. Yeah, because we was watching it with my dad, and he was like, "He was like, hey, look, it's her." He was like, "Who? Yeah. Her? Yeah, her." And yeah. See, it sounds like you don't know your English when you say, "Her can play." <laughs> <laughs> Her could right. really play. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, this year's nominees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame include Cher, Mariah Carey, Mary J. Blige, Peter Frampton, Sinead O'Connor, and Ozzy Osbourne, who's already in there. No, I say Ozzy's not in there. Kind of no, no, he's, he's, he's in, in there, there with, with Black, Black Sabbath. Sabbath. Oh, okay. That makes yeah. Sense. yeah. So this is going to be him on his uh, on Cool in the Gang and Lenny Kravitz as well, among others. Lenny's not in there? No, no. He's, but he's, he's, uh, he's, he's nominated. Up. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, then with, just FYI, her stands for having everything revealed. Having everything yeah. revealed. Well, she had everything covered up, as far as I can see. Anyway. Uh, Beyonce, are you ready for covered. this? It was tightly covered. <laughs> no kidding, man. She, <laughs> was, she's a beautiful, beautiful she's young very lady. Beautiful. Very talented. Uh, too. Beyonce officially uh, releases her new album, I think, end of this month or in March. Yes, you heard the rumor right. It's country. Yeah, she got a couple of country. They even had a commercial yesterday in the yeah. Super Bowl uh, where she's driving. You know, it was like the big billboard of Texas or some such yep, thing. Yeah, that's the name yeah. of her first song, something about Texas. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I said, Texas is a country, hillbilly, is it all the same? Well, I thought anyway. Post Malone seemed somewhat country when Post Malone performed America the Beautiful yesterday playing the acoustic guitar. Yeah. There were people calling for him to do a country album now because they thought he sounded so good. Yeah, well, we'll... We'll see what happens. We're finding different uh, uh, musical trends uh, just starting to get a little a little murky. You you know, over here, you're going to play a little of this. Darius Rucker uh, with Hootie and the Blow Blowfish decided to go country. Uh, Taylor Swift went from country to pop. Right. And now Beyonce, which explains, folks, remember at the Grammy, she had that white cowboy hat on? Uh -huh. And last night, uh, they showed her with a black cowboy hat. Uh -huh. That's why she's wearing all that cowboy stuff. Yeah. She got a country western album. O.J. Simpson has prostate cancer. Larry David once paid a doctor to say that he was crazy. That was to get him out of the Army Reserves. <laughs> Is that illegal? Uh, it w <laughs> of course it is. That's why we're only talking about it now. Oh, I don't know if it's illegal. Might be unethical, but <laughs> yeah, I don't well, know about illegal. Well, we have a guy running for president who uh, could he had a condition that could have been easily fixed, uh, bone spurs, and uh, he, he got out of it. He got out of it. Well, anyway, we, I don't. I don't want to get political. Uh, let's see. Sony bought half of Michael Jackson's music catalog. They mm. sold out. They sold out. Yeah. He was fighting. Even when he was alive, he did not like his yeah. agreement with Sony. Yeah. yeah. And how much did they pay for half of his music catalog? $600 million. That's, wow. That's crackhead money. Yeah. and uh, Michael's catalog? That's yeah. That's crackhead money. That's man. a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, at this point, I remember uh, Michael saying that of all the, the dangerous people, you know, that you ask about, you know, how you're looking over your shoulder. And he says, yeah, I'm looking over my shoulder at the record company. Yep. And it uh, turns uh -huh. out Mike was, <laughs> looks like he was right. Uh, Donald Trump uh, believes Taylor Swift should pledge her loyalty to him. This is because of a bill that he signed that made it easier for artists to collect money uh, as far as their work is concerned. And 
the people who were there says, well, you know what? He signed it. He didn't read it. He didn't know what it was. He just <laughs> signed it. And now he's saying she should pledge her loyalty to him. Wow. And, of course, it's tonight. John Stewart returns to The, the Daily, Daily Show. Show. That's right. It'll be once uh, once a, a week, week, right? Yeah, yeah on, Monday. on Mondays. Yeah, and it should be quite interesting. I really, I really like that guy and the guy right after him, Trevor Noah. Those two yeah. could could split it, but we'll see exactly what happens. But John Stewart tonight, and you know what? I like John Stewart. Yeah. Oh, I do too, man. And he doesn't mince words. And since it's on cable, he doesn't have to. That's your Hollywood update, baby. All right, very good. Uh, we got to get some more audio. We got another audio clip for you, and this is another flashback. To a Jack and Ron classic, Leave it to Beaver episode. Ah, yes. We used to do these Leave it to Beaver episodes all the time uh, where we would sort of, uh, oh, reconstruct the Beaver theme. Uh, And this time Beaver is wondering why his friends want to have Paris Hilton as their BFF. Uh, So (laughs) here, check out our somewhat unusual recreation of- You see that video or something? (laughs) Check out the recreation of Leave It to Beaver. Gee, Dad, I feel kind of creepy. Leave, why is that? Well, my best friends Lumpy and Whitey are auditioning for some show called Paris Hilton, my new BFF. Yeah? BFF means best friend forever. Dad, why would Whitey and Lumpy want to have someone named Paris Hilton as their best friend? I don't know who she is. Uh, well, see, maybe you're not old enough as yet. She's, well, uh, she's a personality that has a reputation for doing some unscrupulous things. My teacher, Miss Landers, says she's a whore, whatever that means. Dad, Miss Landers... What grade are you in, B? Miss <laughs> Landers says... You should be her new BFF. Ah. I asked Miss Landers how she can be your BFF. I said, What about my mom? Isn't she my dad's BFF? Miss Landers said, Mom should move to someplace called BFE. Dad, why, why do you lumpy? <laughs> Why do you and Lumpy say this Paris Hilton girl has a real cool video? It's called One Night in Paris. My brother Wally saw it. He turned it. He said it turned him off. Whatever that means. But Wally said he loved the movie Brokeback Mountain. Dad, Miss Landers says her biological clock is ticking and getting close to the 11 o'clock hour. And she says something has to be done to satisfy her wants and needs. Miss Landers says a woman her age is at her peak. And just like Mick Jagger, she can't get no satisfaction. When does she have time to teach? Her her man is anchored down to some tired, worn out, last year's model, no performing, pearl wearing housewife. Why? (laughs) And wow, Dad, why is it getting harder and harder for me to understand what Miss Landers is saying? Dad, can I have five bucks so I can go to Dairy Queen and get a dilly bar? You can. By the way, bring me one, too. Here you go. Wait a minute. Five bucks? <laughs> what is a dilly bar for the cost, cost, costing five bucks? We did a lot of things, but Beaver was one of those that I I really, truly enjoyed. Because what we were doing then, it, it, in fantasy is fact now a lot of times. Oh, boy, it is. Yeah, geez, so much so. We, we had a lot of fun with Leave it to Beaver, uh, Paula Dean. Bill Clinton, Richard Simmons, a a bunch of people. We did little featurettes, uh, including them, and uh, we had a lot of fun with them. It was interesting. A lot of our coworkers, our comrades, our colleagues would say, who's Beaver? Yeah. And and, and it's like, (laughs) no, no, it's not what you're thinking. Leave it to Beaver was a guy's name. Really? Jerry Mathers was the Beaver. Tony Dow. Was Wally? Yeah. All right, we got to get to the dumbass joke of the day. You ready for this? Dumbass. Oh, that was a bad one. Hello, dumbass joke of the day. <laughs> All right. You just bought that thing. I know. <laughs> Wonder if there's a warranty on it. Hey, good money for that. Yeah. <laughs> At least ten bucks. All right, dumbass joke of the day. We have three very cheesy jokes. What we do is we give Ron the three cheesy jokes. We let Ron pick one of the cheesy jokes. So mm-hmm. yes. Again today, Ron gets to pick his cheese. The three cheesy jokes today. Number one, two boys. Number two, two sisters. Number three, teachers' questions. Again, two boys, two sisters, teachers' questions. What's it going to be? Well, it's always ladies first. So this time, let's go with two boys. Oh, okay. Let's put the guys up front for a change. Okay. One boy says to another. Young boy says, hey, I bet you're still a virgin. The other boy says, well, I was a virgin until last night. And the first boy says, I don't believe you. 
He says, yeah, just ask your sister. The first boy says, I don't have a sister. Other boy says, yeah, you will in about nine months. Oh. No. Hey. Wow. Wow. I'll give you another one. What, just you know, for, that, don't you always hate when somebody your age knows no, more about sex than you do? Yeah, and and then and they read it to you, and you don't, and you look stupid. Here's another one for you: a girl, young girl, realized she had, well, some hair growing between her legs. Huh? She got worried, <laughs> worried about it, and asked her mom, "Mama, you know, I got a hair growing between my legs." And her mom said, "Well, oh, that part where the hair has grown." Is called a monkey. Be proud that your monkey has grown hair. And the girl smiled. So at dinner, the girl tells her sister, hey, my monkey has grown hair. And her sister smiled and said, that's nothing. Mine's already eating bananas. Oh. Hey. All right. You want another oh, one? Oh, yeah. I'll Come on. I'll give you one more. Yes. Teacher says, hey, kids, I got questions for you, all right? First off, what does the chicken give you? Student says, eggs. Teacher says, very good. Now the teacher says, what does the pig give you? Student yells, bacon. Teacher says, great. Then the teacher says, and what does the big fat cow give you? Student says, homework. Oh, come on. Oh, boy. It wasn't milk. It wasn't milk. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that one is valedictorian chances out the window. Yeah. <laughs> no chance for that kid. All right. Very well. Uh, let's see. We got to do Tribon, don't we? Holy yes, we cow. do. I'm looking at my schedule. How are we doing on time? Oh, I'm not bad. I'm really good. Tribon, will we give you three words? You got to come up with one word of the words with the three. The answer must match ours. Okay. Okay. The three words we had last week. We give you a full seven days to think about it. So come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, three words last week were blank, hip, pay. Let me give them to you again. Blank. Hip, hey. I think Richard had it. Right? Yeah. Check. yeah. Check is correct, yeah. Blank check, hip check, pay check. All right, here's this week's. This one might stump you just a tad. Oh, this is not uh, easier than a three-legged... No, not, I don't think a three-legged dog with no tail and an eye patch could get this one too quickly. All righty. Uh, yeah. uh -oh. Let's check got. it out. Now All right. Cooking. You got your phone ready? I'm ready. All right. Three words, one word works with the three. Your answer must match mine. Celery, rock, water. Hey, would you give it to me one more time? Well, let, let, me, right. write, let me write this down. I, something jumped out at me, and I, I don't know if it was the right one or not. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> he got it. it. Oh. I'm not going to tell it to you because... Most people took, I, I gave this to a couple guys at the uh, local watering hole, and it took them some time to, of course, they'd already had a few pops. I'm about to say watering hole, man. He didn't know their own name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here you go again. Celery, rock, water. Celery, rock, water. We'll give you seven days to think up the answer, and we'll give the answer next week when we return right here at Othello's Italian Restaurant. Got to say hi to Jeremy, Jeremy Anderson. Who's checking us out? And Arjun, my friend Arjun from Nepal, is uh, watching today too. Thank you, Arjun. Hey, what about William Patfield? Yeah, I see William. Yeah, uh huh. Good going, William. Hey, hey, hey. all right. That's how you hang. <laughs> <laughs> we got to finish this thing up with two tough trivia. Well, like I said, it's Black History Month, and a lot of times, uh, and I, I hear this a lot, and I, I think I want to buy into it. Uh, black history is American history. Uh huh. And. Uh, the part of history that a number of individuals uh, all across the country are trying to uh, make disappear. I don't believe in it, and so there you go. Well, who is Matthew Henson? Who Matthew Henson is Matthew Henson. Now I know I'm going to get this wrong because I know it's not. It's, I thought Matthew Henson invi invented the cotton gin, but that's not him. It's Matthew Henson. Did he invent a sport? No, he did not. Hey, Richard, you got any answers? No, I was looking it up. Well, <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> well, at least I was being honest. Well, I'll put it this way. Uh, until recently, uh, oh. there was a concerted effort to keep Matthew Henson out of the history books. Okay, so give me the answer, and I know I've heard this before. Uh, Matthew Henson was with Admiral Perry, when he went to the North Pole. 
Okay. And as he was the one that went ahead of it. That's right. He was the first one to the North Pole uh, because uh, Admiral Perry had frostbite and he was in one of the sleds being pulled by dogs. And of course, uh, Matthew didn't have a chance to get in a sled. So Uh he, he went ahead and set up camp and things like that. He was the first one there. Now, the part that gets me in New York, they have something called the Explorers Club and which, uh, uh, Admiral uh, Perry received all kind of accolades. Matthew Henson, who was with him, kind of blazed the trail, had to wait out in the car because they wouldn't let him in the front door. He had wait, to go. They around. wouldn't let him in the front door. That is correct. And he had to go around to the back wow. door. And it's just recently they have started talking and giving Matthew Henson credit for being and in leading that expedition to the North Pole with Admiral Perry. Now, you go back to some of the other books, and uh, Matthew Henson's name may be mentioned, maybe not. But that goes to what I was saying about people trying to erase history. Yep. Especially my folks' history. All right. Well, let me stop for it before I get angry, and you know what happens when I get angry. A quick (laughs) quick hello to (laughs) Kathy Lamandia, who's watching today, too. Says, hey, guys, good to have you. Thanks to all you guys for watching today. Um, I was going to mention oh, a couple of my favorite commercials, I guess they always talk about commercials in the Super Bowl. I like the one with the Clydesdale horses where it's snowing so bad, the dog has to lead the horses. Do you remember that one where the dog gets in front and it's snowing, coming down so bad, so the dog leads the way I, for the horses? I'm, I'll, I'll catch it. I, I missed that one. I'm, and then I must have the kitchen to get some wings At or the something. very end, the dog, yeah. is, the dog is reaching up and uh, – Kissing the face of the horse. It's really cool for Budweiser, for the Clydesdales. Very cool. Yeah, I thought um, a lot of the commercials, most of them, were very unique and, and pretty funny. You know, the one with Ben Affleck, I read you know, Ben Affleck and J-Lo. They paid Ben Affleck to do that Dunkin' Donuts commercial, $10 million. Wow. Yeah. But they said last year he did one for Dunkin' Donuts, and the next day Dunkin' Donuts had record sales. Uh-huh. See, and that's what I've always stressed to people is, they a lot of I mean quite often people say, Oh, it doesn't make me want to go out and buy this, that, or other to have a celebrity on there. Apparently it does work. If you have a celebrity out there pitching a product, a lot of times people follow it. If Taylor Swift came out tomorrow and said, Hey, my favorite ice cream is this one, whatever, don't you know every one of her followers would be out there the next day buying up ten yep. gallons of the crap? See, what if the be you know, folks from the beehive and the Swifties all got together? Oh. How much of society would they be in charge <laughs> they of? They could control it all. All right. There that's yeah, that's why politicians are trying there to suck up to them right yeah. now. And think of what you could do locally if you have a product or service. If you hired Jack and Ron to go ahead and pitch it. Ooh, oh my. man. Think of how many Jack and Ron followers would jump all over it. Well, as it is, we're here every week at Othello's, and I'm told the business here at Othello's is phenomenal because we promote it each week. It's booming. I'm not going to say one word that I – well, I'll say this one word that I heard uh, over and over, expansion. But, you know, I don't know if it applies here or whatever, but that word, it it just keeps coming up. Because the Othello's (laughs) uh, brand is growing and growing. And I think maybe it has something to do with the fact that we're here every week mm-hmm. pumping it. You know, same with Flash Hauler and now Andy B's, the uh, company we promote that uh, has the cool arcade, the bowling, the axe throwing. And all. Anyway, that's just something for you business owners to think about. Meanwhile, we got to wrap this thing up and get the hell out of here. All right. Here. You mentioned Andy B's, and I want to say one more time, uh-huh. if this is uh, the time for you to go ahead and get together with a big class reunion or maybe a uh, uh, spring break or something like that, are just a good bunch of people getting together, having a great time, they have a place for you. It's Andy B's where you can go ahead and you can bowl, you can shoot pool, you can play darts, you can axe throw, you can go ahead and go to the arcade and uh, redeem for big prizes the tickets that you get. And after all of that, you can go sit down and have your big tall one. And you know, a lot of times I hear girls talking about ladies, I should say, saying, you know, we want to have a girls night out, but we don't want to go someplace where it's just a, a hangout bar where guys are going to be hitting on all. Yep. Andy B's be a perfect place for a girl's night out. You got the arcade. You can play pool. Yeah, you can get a cold one at the bar. You can get whatever you want at the bar. It's a yep. fully open adult beverage uh, location. It's a big bar. And a great restaurant. Yes. So think about that. We got to get out of here. Think about joining us again next week, okay? 
the number one video podcast in America, Jack and Ron. Mm-hmm. Not only on Facebook, but YouTube, Instagram, and God knows where else. And, of course, the audio <laughs> is uploaded on every uh, podcast site in the world, streaming on Spotify, TuneIn, iHeartMedia Podcast, you name it. Hey, so, wait, wait a minute. If you missed this, when can we catch the, uh, uh, the rebroadcast of this program? Yeah, when Wednesday? can Wednesday. 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 Uh, okay. I thought you was asking like the audience. No, uh, no, 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 no. I was, I was just double like checking with you. Question. Yeah. Now, Wednesday, you can catch the rebroadcast for sure. All right, we got to get out of here. When you go out to do what you do, by God, do it like Jack and Ron. Be mm. the best at what you do. Please. Be the very best at what you do, like Jack and Ron. Go out there, give it 110, 120, 130 percent effort. Come on, like Jack and Ron. Go out there, give it hell. Bye, bye, everybody.